One of the most cathartic experiences that one can have when playing a video game is when you hear that sweet pop of the digital bank vault opening and that title doling out an unlockable reward. From firearms to brand new modes, the sweet feeling of earning something for continued or skillful play is one of life's true satisfactions. And things get even better when you finally unlock the ability to play as new characters, often changing up the way that you actually take on the game and results in fresh experiences even in the most well-worn of titles. However, these 10 entries, uh, well, they're not of that ilk, and are instead unlockable characters that will make the player furious at the hours wasted to get them, and even leave them scratching their heads as to why these personalities were ever included in the first bloody place. It's always nice to engage in a bit of digital dress-up from time to time, but these alternate skins, characters, and costumes are just gathering dust and being eaten by moths because nobody wanted them. With this in mind, I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video game unlockable characters that nobody wanted wanted. Number 10. Meet Mortal Kombat 4 If there's one thing that the Mortal Kombat series has buckets of, other than blood and gore that is, it's unlockable characters. The roster as it stands today is swollen with brilliantly realised fighters of all shapes and sizes, and it's mind-blowing and amazing to see how some of these warriors were birthed out of secrets, internet rumours, and glitches. However, when you've got so many hits, it just makes the rare misses seem even worse. And while it would have been easy to pop mocap on here because it's just a bloke covered in balls, at least he's so odd that he's memorable. Meat, on the other hand, well he's just a flayed fellow which just makes the player feel like a fool for unlocking him. In Mortal Kombat 4, if the player goes through the group mode and beats all of the other opponents, the next time that they select their fighter, Meat will take their place, complete with their moveset. Now while it might be a bit of a smirk inducing moment at first, this soon gets washed away when you realise that if you lose a battle as Meat, you'll have to go through the same process again to unlock him. Now Netherrealm did try and add more depth to the character by giving him a backstory, but it's barely skin deep, which kind of actually makes sense as you're literally a bloody skeleton. Number 9. Roll Marvel vs. Capcom 2 To begin with, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is utter mwah, chef's kiss. From its aesthetics to its incredibly cheesy but brilliant soundtrack, and the fact that it's got one of the most robust fighting systems even by today's standards, it's a joy from start to finish. And that roster? Oh, it's packed with all of your favourites. Hell, you can even play as a hulking sentinel if you fancy it. Yet, there is one absolute stinker in the group, and that's Roll. I mean, where to even begin? In. I guess she's listed as a joke character, but I bet that nobody was laughing when they realised her moves were much weaker than Mega Man's, who she borrows her moveset from, and she's also one of the slowest members of the roster thanks to her tiny legs. In fact, on the game's wiki, under Advanced Strategies, it simply says, pick someone else. And to top it all off, she even has added lag due to the fact that some of her moves require her to equip her weapon, which in a fighting game which requires perfect timing in order to stay competitive is an absolute death knell to her usefulness. Do yourself a favour and roll over purchasing this puny pugilist. Number 8. The Armed Forces Characters Time Splitters series. I never thought I'd see the day where I'd critique one of the finest FPS titles ever made, but here we are. Now, one of Time Splitters is, is, is his most interesting features, outside of an incredible multiplayer suite, was that the roster of characters was utterly absurd in both what you could play as and the sheer number of options available to you. Floating snowmen, undead deer, a robotic goldfish in a bowl, and so many more could be unlocked through challenges and hitting personal bests. However, not all of these were fit to split and were a bit more, well. The trooper, lieutenant, sergeant and captain characters are four such brackets, being just faceless or stock armed goons that sometimes have bizarrely challenging requirements to unlock. Imagine getting through the arcade league and barely scraping a gold trophy after hours and hours of play, only to be rewarded with one of these guys. And with other members of the roster being so strong, there's honestly no joy to be had unlocking these pallet swaps, and I doubt that they saw any use other than as bots to take out your anger on. Number 7. Fred Durst, WWF Smackdown, Just Bring It Right, okay, so let's just address the elephant in the room. Yes, Limp Bizkit have had some absolute bangers in their time, and without Mr. Durst and his cohort, we wouldn't have the chilling experience of seeing The Undertaker scream to the ring on his motorbike to the sounds of Roland. 
position. However, does that mean that anyone in their right mind would want to play as the self-appointed hard man of new rap and just bring it? No, not in the slightest, especially seeing as the requirements to do so were unusually difficult. As The Undertaker, you'd have to take 15 enemies on a last ride under the slobber knocker match type to unlock the backwards cap wannabe brawler, which is no mean feat to begin with. Now, while it might have been amusing to witness Fred Durst's custom intro the first few times, the novelty wore thin when you realized that this unlock spot could have gone to any other wrestler and produced a bigger pop. Hell, even getting the old Undertaker costume would have just provided a greater reward. But as it stands, this was less just bring it and more just bin it. Number six, Cloud, Final Fantasy Tactics. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Am I reading this right? Nobody wanted to play as Cloud in a Final Fantasy game? Am I trying to incite a riot? Well, hold on, my friends, and please let me explain. Yes, everyone loves Cloud Strife, and he's one of the most iconic video game characters ever period. And, and this has been proven time over with the Final Fantasy VII Remake. I mean, he's still got a rabid fan base, but in Final Fantasy Tactics, they kind of botched his appearance. The road to unlocking Cloud is a long and arduous one, requiring you to grab a pretty flower from Aerith, or a look-alike at best, and have battled through optional areas with optional characters in your army. Also, it has to be at least chapter 4 before you do any of this. So hours and hours later, when this checklist of chores is done, you'll finally be able to find, chase down, and recruit Cloud. Amazing, right? Well, they would be if only he wasn't level 1. I mean, we're a huge chunk of the way through now and we find out that his stats are just absolute garbage. Plus, he gets cut apart like he's made of paper and he doesn't even have his iconic blade to begin with. This results in more fetch quests and dangerous grinding which will likely see him KO'd. So in short, while everyone wanted to unlock Cloud, that is definitely certain, no one wanted to unlock this form of Cloud. Give us a soldier to be proud of not a babysitting mission with a face. But for the record, his leveling was incredible and his limit is still one of the best specials in the game, but still. Number 5. Metallic Kart Racers Mario Kart 8 Everyone hates palette swap unlockables, right? I mean, putting in time and effort into a game only to get a colour swap has to be the least rewarding feeling you can get, especially when said skins are just simple lazy texture effects. Say hello to Mario Kart 8's Metal Mario and Pink Gold Peach, which the player could unlock by coming first in a Grand Prix race randomly dropping as a prize. And I mean, what a prize, right? I mean, the only benefit that these metal motorheads offer over their counterparts is their increased weight, which moves to the heavy bracket. And you know what? That's great if you find yourself wanting to shunt others off the road, but not so much if you want to, uh, well, turn anytime soon. This wouldn't have been so bad had these characters been mere skin swaps for Peach and Mario, but the fact that they were bigged up like a true brand new character was underwhelming to say the least. This fact got driven home harder when the Switch edition came out boasting new fan favourites like Dry Bones and King Boo, further pushing the use of Metal Mario and Pink Gold Piss even further down the line. Number 4. Combo – Jet Set Radio Future I absolutely adore the Jet Set Radio franchise. Never have I seen such a confident approach to gameplay, graphics, and of course, such a rip-roaring soundtrack. And playing through Jet Set Radio Future is still one of my all-time gaming highlights. I wanted to know everything about the world of Neo Tokyo, explore every area from its grimy sewers to the impossibly high skyscrapers, and Sega rewarded those who explored with a ton of unlockables, including a whole host of characters. Besides their cool and edgy streetwear, each character is broken down into stats, such as cornering and acceleration, and it's especially these two skills that you'll need for, well, 90% of the game, as cornering helps you steer in the air and acceleration, well, I mean, that's pretty obvious. Therefore, if you've got low numbers in this bracket, then you're kind of bordering on useless. So say hello to Combo, who has the lowest of these traits in the entire game. It's such a shame because he looks so cool and his ability to hold more spray than others does have its uses, but he's just so slow and handles up the Titanic, meaning that in later sections of the game, he's almost unusable. It's a shame as well because I love the fact that he carries around his own boombox. 
Number 3. William Borden Urban Rain When you have a fighting game based on the glorious Power Stone titles, you know that you're going to be in for a good time. And Urban Rain, whilst having a pretty mediocre aesthetic, is a true joy when it comes to its multiplayer offering. Acting as an homage to the likes of Double Dragon, Streets of Rage, and other brawlers of the glory days, Urban Rain has you take on waves of goons as Brad Hawk as he searches for answers by beating people's faces in. And along the way, you'll meet a whole host of bosses and allies who become unlockable through progression in the story mode. There's even some great cameos from Paul and Law from the Tekken series. Now, those are unlockables done right. However, there is a massive issue with the game's final unlock, William Borden. Now, Borden is the final boss of the game, and... God, he absolutely sucks. Fighting as him is a chore, as it's only his counters that are capable of dealing big damage. Plus, he is the most boring person to look at visually. What makes it worse, however, is that you have to get an S ranking in all of the chapter missions to even play as him, meaning that he's the character which requires the most effort for the least combat effectiveness. What a waste of time. Number 2. Dr. Boskanovich Tekken 3 in fighting games, you better hit hard or go home crying. As if you're a weakling going up against the likes of Ryu from Street Fighter or King from Tekken, you're gonna go out on your back. However, what if being on your back is 90% of your movesets? Well, then you might well be Dr. B from Tekken 3, and you might suck even more as a fighter. Cobbling together his fighting style from other characters, Dr. B has the slowest basic attacks in the game and often ends his combos by falling over, requiring the player to put in a new combo to get him back up on his feet again. Plus, if you take a hit, then, because the good doctor just doesn't know what pain protection is in the game, he'll hold that area in agony, leaving him totally defenseless. As a joke character, he's fine, but going through Tekken Force mode four times in order to get a guy who looks one cough away from death at the best of times isn't what anyone wanted, and would only be wheeled out as a comedy act once or twice in gaming sessions with your mates, and that's it. And number one, Base Goku, Dragon Ball Fighters. When you think of the Dragon Ball franchise, it's pretty likely that you'll immediately think of the Monkey Man himself, Goku, and also probably how his combined screaming scenes from across the series would actually last about a full day. He's a character that has transcended his own IP to become one of the most recognizable animated characters, and say it with me, kids, of all time appearing in countless video games, movies, and TV shows over the years. Hell, fans love him so much that he even appears in multiple forms in most of the video games that he's in, and the exceptional fighter is no exception. However, there's one option that feels, well, more than a little underwhelming, and that's base Goku. And yes, I know that this is technically DLC, so it's only technically unlocked by spending cash and not investing skill, but come on, I've, I really feel the need to go in here on the fact that you're basically being charged for a character in his weakest state when there are versions of Super Saiyan and God Saiyan in the vanilla game. People already had Goku, so what was the point of this one? And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 video game unlockable characters that nobody you wanted. I hope that you enjoyed that and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. If you want to chat to me further about all things to do with wrestling, video game and TV, anything else, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero and do your big bold bad boy a favour. Swing by Live and Let's Dice. It's my personal gaming channel that I've got out here at the moment. I stream all sorts of games and it'll be lovely to see you over there. But before I go, I'm going to tell you something that I feel that everybody wants to hear at least at some points in their life and that is you are a big ledge my friend. I know that there's a lot of stress and strain going on at the moment with the current situation and I hope that you're doing well both physically and mentally. Be kind to yourself as best you possibly can because you are a big bloody ledge. You deserve love, happiness and success all right and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Big love from me to you. As always I've been Jules, you have been awesome, never forget that and I'll speak to you soon.